All right. Let's get into some cool stuff this morning. How many of you would say that you have at least one cycle or pattern of behavior that you continue to do that you wish you would or could stop? Could be in your relationships, could be in your uh, habits, could be in your, um, you know, spiritual life, whatever. Um, a particular one for me would be my relationship with food and my desire to be healthier and, 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 and live as long as I can and as well as I can. Um, so, you know, what, what is that all about? And uh, I want to give you some, you know, we're still talking about the brain, believe it or not. We're still talking about some of the Sabbath type principles that we, uh, we like to look at and talk about. Uh, but I want you to be thinking about where where is there a self-defeating pattern in my life? It might be in your thought life that you just think and talk to yourself in a way that's unkind. So what, what I want to do is kind of sneak up on some of that. And uh, let me just say something really, really, really practical here. I said this in the description to today, that your energy-efficient brain, and then in parentheses, lazy, and all I mean by that is, your brain's going to follow the patterns it's 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 learned uh, forever until you consciously intentionally kind of stop it and then rewrite them rescript them re reform them and um, <clears throat> again like I said I'm I'm still trying to pull together the the brain the Sabbath and all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things you've got to learn to do, and th these are two things that are so critical and they're so simple, but not easy. And that is stop. You've got to figure out a way to stop every day. And then I would recommend you figure out a way to write, W-R-I-T-E. Why? Because writing makes you slow down. Writing makes you think more clearly. Writing makes you think about what you're thinking about. Writing makes you look at your thoughts as like different from you. When I, when I think about my thinking, I'm taking a thought, I'm such a loser, and I'm looking at that thought, I'm such a loser, like that thought's over here, not in here. And I can challenge it and I can say, okay, wait a minute. I, I'm not very good at this, that, or the other. But you know, I'm really pretty good at this or whatever. You've got to figure out a way to block off, protect, and invest in stopping, where you stop the, the merry-go-round, the roller coaster ride, and you get quiet and get to yourself for three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And I would highly recommend that you write. This, this is a journal of mine, and, and I'll process stuff in it. I'll, I'll process what I feel like scripture saying to me, but I'll also process my struggles. I'll process, gosh, why, why do I keep doing that when I know it's not going to give me the result that I want? So you've got to figure out how to stop, be more mindful of what's happening inside of you. And I believe one of the best ways to do that is in your stopping, right and I'm talking pen and paper. Now, some of you are going to say, well, I, you know, I like to type and I do my journaling in my iPad or computer or whatever. Well, if, if, if you can do that and not have to think, like if you're one, a person who can type really well, maybe that's okay. But there's something about pen and paper that slows your brain down, activates more parts of your brain, to be honest with you, and connects you to the content of your writing. So again, figure out a way to stop with some regularity and write things down. Now, real quickly, I want to look at a scripture we looked at a couple weeks ago. Last week, I took a little side trip because I just wanted to share something that I felt like the Lord was saying and doing with me uh, about a uh, transformational friendship and and all that. But I want to get back on track with, uh, we talked about Isaiah 30, verse 15 which is an amazing verse. If you read it in context, it's just scary that God offered them uh, everything they want, in essence, but, but he asked them to just stop. 
you know, through, through rest and repentance is your strength. And it's so sad that it says they wouldn't do it. So let's look at this verse in Ephesians chapter four, and I'll ping off of it for a minute. Uh, verse 22, Ephesians four says this, in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, lay aside the old self, lay aside the old self. What is that all about? In the context of our conversations, the old self is that habitual reflex, automatic response way that you do life. You hit a certain kind of a situation, someone reacts negatively to you, and, and your old self scripts kick in. You know, I'm such a loser. You know, people don't like me. And, and, and that's your old self. It says, uh, lay aside your old self, which is being corrupted corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit or deceitful desires, deceitful desires. Then it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What does that mean? The bottom line is we get triggered. We get triggered by what's happening around us. We get triggered by our own thoughts. And what happens again, remember the energy efficient slash or parentheses lazy brain it just wants to go where it has always gone. Certain kind of situation, I get around, used to be for me, I would get around high power driven leaders and I would, my scripts would kick in from my dad's stuff, you're lazy, you'll never mount anything. And I would feel insecure and inferior automatically, instantly, I would be grasping for some sense of expressing my value because I didn't feel like I had any. And that was so automatic that it felt like it was me. But it wasn't me. It was a way I'd learned to think about me. It wasn't me. It's really important. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's where the juicy work gets done. How do you do that? How do you, how do you get in touch with <clears throat> thought patterns, reactive patterns that are deeper than your everyday thinking? Like right now, if I said, what's two plus two? You just, you know, well, two plus two is four. You're thinking consciously. But below that, you're already responding to the day. You're responding to how the important people in your life treated you yesterday, what you're expecting for today. And you're, 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 you're infusing into all of that this subconscious spirit of your mind type stuff about how you see yourself, how you feel about yourself, how you see God and how you believe he feels about you, what you believe you have to do to please him and please people. And all of that's happening instantly and quickly. So we got to figure out a way to do that. It goes on to say, put on. So put off that old scripted self and put be renewed in the spirit of your mind, which is where those scripts are stored and then put on a new you. How do you put on a new you? By identifying those old scripts and rewriting them, replacing them. What I'm saying to you today is there's two simple things that are gonna be imperative. They've got to happen. And that is that you figure out how to stop to think more deeply about what's happening and you begin the habit of writing. I've, I, it's kind of a, uh, just an obsession of mine to talk to people about that lately. And I've talked to some people that would just never went near the whole writing, journaling or anything. But, you know, I nudged them and, and they've had some really cool insights and breakthroughs by taking a subject they've wrestled with for years and doing these two things. Stop, put yourself in a place where you can Give your attention to what's happening inside of you and write, write down. And there's some things we can talk about as to how to do that and all that good stuff. But for today, all I want to do is get you thinking about your need to put off old, put on new. And the key is identifying these deeply ingrained patterns of thought, belief, and behavior. Thought, belief, and behavior. And that a key to that is learning to stop and break those things down a lot of times by writing. All right? But we're going to keep at it. We're going to keep messing with it. Hey, David Toyne, how you doing, man? 
Reese Nichols. Reese Nichols is down in uh, Australia. And uh, whatever. So both of those are some really good friends of mine. Love you guys.